Greetings and welcome to 13 Nights of <laughs> Yes, you just got another jump scare from the guy who claims to hate pointless jump scares. But there are points in my jump scares actually there to keep you alert and to keep you somewhat... I don't want to say scared, but to keep you a little on edge during this thing. I like it when people don't know what's coming in my show, and I always like surprises. And maybe that's what really attracts me to horror, is not so much the scares, but the surprises. But there are some really stupid, stupid jump scares and a lot of stupid surprises. And nothing worse than the surprise that someone who you thought was dead turns out to be alive. Now, of course, there are exceptions to this. Numerous, numerous exceptions. They lead to some great, great scares when you think that someone is dead and they suddenly scream to life and chew your face off or attack you with a knife. However, it does become really ridiculous at times when you have human characters that take, like, shot after shot after shot with the gun, and then you come up to a close-up on their face, and you wonder, oh, is he dead? Is he dead? And of course he lunges up and scares you. The Scream movies were known for this, too. It was part of, like, the gag. But a lot of times, when you have a human character, you wonder just what does it take to kill this ordinary person. When you have a supernatural being, that's a different story, though there are exceptions to that, too. There are times when... Some of those things come back to life and you just wonder, how can that thing be alive? You got the Child's Play movie. Spoiler about the Child's Play movie. At the end, the thing is, like, the Nostalgia Critic and Phelous did a really good review. And they spoke about how the Chucky doll, by the end of the movie, has no limbs, basically one leg. Its head has been blown off. And it's still coming. The only way you kill it is by shooting it in the heart. And it's just so comical at that point. And I'm sure people can think of a lot of movies where it feels like the killer should be dead. It has no reason to still be alive. And yet, for some reason, it comes back to life and it seems that there's no way to kill it. Now, most horror villains are scariest when... There seems to be no way to really stop them. No way to kill them whatsoever. Though I think it is much more realistic if there is a way for the protagonist to fight the antagonist. So when things are futile, it is pretty scary. But... I don't know, for some reason, I just like it a lot more when the villain does actually have something to be afraid of. It makes them more interesting, it makes them want more, they have more motivation to stop certain things, because if something can actually hurt them, that's more reason for them to do this horrible crime. It just gets really stupid when you have an invincible monster or person that has all the reason in the world to be dead. And narrative convenience and the desire for another stupid jump scare brings the thing back to life. Yeah. Now with the movie Sinister, there didn't seem to be any way to fight the monster. You burn the footage, but that didn't help. I don't mind that. I kind of like that. And I think we all saw that coming, so we didn't feel it was cheap. What would have felt really cheap is if uh, Bagul had appeared one of his random stupid jump scares and Ethan Hawke had, like, axed his head off and burned him to the ground and then sometimes he somehow he still appears. Then again, the guy was a pagan god, so you can kind of get away with it. But let's face it. When something is mortal, we all define living things by the fact that they can die. If they can die, they are alive. That's how we define it. That's how we define it ever since we were kids. So when you see something that can actually die, that makes it more real to you. And more real equals more scary. So I encourage people to stretch their imaginations, but there are times where movies just ask too much.